Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we are talking all about how to grow your company, strengthen, make it bigger. I know we talk about growth a lot, but this is going to be a good one with just five simple steps. So if you're in business going into 2024, let's grow it, but stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. You have stumbled across a podcast based on window cleaning or any small business. Hopefully, you dig it. couple awesome shout-outs to some amazing people. we got Tyler Weaver. What's up, man? Logan Wood, of course, the man himself. Uh, great talk, by the way, with you. Uh, Dylan Williams, what's up? Also, just some awesome, cool kids that let me put their orders in for you. Um, so, thank you in advance. Um, but we are talking today all about growth and Sometimes when we talk about growth, people just get all kind of weird and um, a little bit uh, perturbed. Like, well, I don't want to grow. I'm not trying to be just big. You know, big. Yes, uh, right, obviously. But if you get bigger, if that's your goal, you want to have maybe more income. Maybe you want to have a bigger gross. Maybe you want to do all that. doesn't mean you have to hire more people. But some of you, a lot of you, are like me, where I just wanted to be a bigger company. I wanted to be a stronger company. Now, if you become a million dollar company, which congrats to those of you who are, but there's ways to do that extremely smart and you could be way more profitable. These guys are like, oh man, I know guys that, and I know companies, million dollar company and they do, uh, you know, $30,000 in profit. That doesn't make sense. So if you're going to be big, it has to be smart, right? Right. So that's what we're talking about. And a couple quick ways to do that in 2024, just anywhere, ends up being almost like the same five concepts that could work for a lot of businesses. Any businesses that are really kind of small service style businesses, which yours is. And um, I just want to jump right into it because growth for me is exciting. Like, growth in so many other ways, like not only can it make you more money, but it can make your company stronger. It can make your profits up. It could make your efficiency. There's just so many pieces to it. So I just want to jump in. And I want to say the first and probably one of the biggest mindset changes for this growth, just being bigger, is going to be the income is the main thing over new customers. Now, do you need new customers? Yeah, to grow? I mean, technically, no. But if you want to grow, that's what has to happen. Some go out, some go in. That's kind of what's happening in general. So you do really, really want to find new customers. But there's so many other pieces that you have at your disposal that people sometimes forget about. Sometimes they don't put enough kind of um, work in for a lot of the uh, existing customers or total ticket prices or raising prices or any of that stuff. And what ends up happening is that they're so focused on that new customer. Because getting a new customer is like sexy and exciting and it's all of that stuff. But just to play devil's advocate, which you know I like to do with my analogies anyway... But think about it, if you just uh, did every single customer you've ever done once, there was no repeat, there was no upsells, there was none of that, you're done, year two, you have to go out and find all new customers. You're going to have to work so incredibly hard to try to even match what you did last year. If you got to get all new customers, that's a lot of work. It's a very expensive undertaking. But yet, almost all of us focus more on getting new customers than anything else. It's the most expensive piece of this. It is the hardest to do. It is the, you know, um, extensive, you're, 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 you're having to cover way more bases to kind of get the same thing. So with all that being said, it's not new customers or existing customers or fill in the blank. It's the income produced. 
No, if you could change your mindset just on this part, think about this. Obviously, you go, well, yeah, <laughs> I know it's the money. I, I know that part. Yes, I know. We all kind of know that. But really think about it. It doesn't matter how many customers. It doesn't matter what kind of customers. It doesn't matter any of that. It matters what the total gross numbers are based off what we're doing. Now, yes, obviously we're talking gross numbers in growth and net numbers mean, you know, how you work on efficiencies and we'll get to that. But think about gross numbers. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can raise ticket prices, meaning getting them on upsells and doing add-ons and doing a lot more services for every person. You can also increase it by price. If you just, you know, decided you're paying, t you're charging 10 times more and everybody said yes, which wouldn't happen at a 10 times raise, but hypothetically, you'd make 10 times more money, right? So now we can, okay, how do we work that making it smart and in, right? There's a lot of you out there who don't raise prices every year just due to inflation. You're losing money. That's mind blowing to me. But in growth, all of those little pieces are what increase that gross total. If I could get every one of my customers to do window cleaning every single week, again, not doing that, it's not possible, but for an analogy, I would hypothetically increase my business. If last year they only did it once, this year I could dig and do it every single week, I've just 52 times my business. Now, I know these are just exaggerated, but I really want to kind of put that through is, is that it is the income side more than the new customers. It's more than the, you know, how many customers do I have? What if each customer is a $1,000 ticket on average, right? Focus on the income over the customer. The income side is where you can increase frequency. Huge. Dentist clothes. Again, I'm not going to rape... Go back on that one. Dentist clothes will change your business. I thousand percent guarantee it. Thousand percent will guarantee if you do the dentist clothes and you do it right, it will increase your business. I promise you. I promise you. But some people go, ah, it's a little uncomfortable to do. I'm not used to it. That's why it's called the dentist clothes. Think of the dentist. You're not uh, uncomfortable at the dentist, right? Okay. Off of all that, focus on the income, not the customer. The income is the part. How do you raise your income? How do you raise your tickets? How do you put little raises on everything to get it? Not just charging more, but what if now every customer, they find out I do house washing? What if I could tack on, you know, sill cleaning or sill, you know, repair or uh, screen, screen cleaning or screen repair? All these little things you could add to that. You're increasing your tickets, really, right? Another thing to grow your business that people sometimes lack is the presence. Now, I have to say, you guys know my thoughts on door knocking. And now, yes, everybody has their own feelings on it. I hate door knocking. I think it is not at all something that is made for our industry, not at all. There's better ways to do it, more efficient ways to do it, ways that you don't sour your name, ways you don't upset every single person. And by the way, every time I say that about the door knocking thing and somebody goes, oh, I have people that say, oh gosh, I'm so happy you rang my doorbell to let me know. Could that have happened? Maybe. Could they be just trying to do be polite? Yes. Has anybody ever been happy to say, oh, a stranger at my door. Neat. I wonder what they're going to sell me. Not once ever has anybody been happy that there's strangers knocking at the door with a clipboard and a, and a hat going, hey, I got a great deal for you. Not ever. Now, maybe at the end, or well, I, I guess I did want window clip. Why start that? Anyway, I'm off that. I have a video on my YouTube channel about how I hate door knocking. And yeah, there's always some little kid out there who says, well, I see the guys on TikTok have a million dollars. Do they? Do they? Because they don't. And it's staged and it's garbage and they have a 1.2 star rating on Google. So anyway, okay. Off that. Off that high horse. But the presence is the part, right? Presence is the... the there is everybody 
in the world, well, in the nation, everybody's house has windows. So technically, everybody is a potential customer. But as you home that in, it's like, okay, well, not everybody's in the budget for that. Not everybody's got the windows that was in. Some people just don't care, right? A lot of people. So now that starts to get less and less and less, and now you're getting a stronger pool. Now, let's say out of your city, 50% of people could be your potential. Could be 20%, whatever you think. But put a number, doesn't matter. Those 20% of people are not on Facebook all the time. And in fact, it would be impossible for you to connect to all of them with an ad or anything all the time. So we need to see, okay, well, out of all of those people, say it's a thousand people in your town, 10,000, 100,000, I need to be seen by all of them. I have to be present so that I can help trigger that they want it. I can help them see the company when it is time for that. I could do all of that. I have to be seen to do that. If I put a billboard up, in my garage, only like the one or two people that walk past my garage when it's open see the billboard, right? Without getting into billboards <laughs> as a whole. That's, that's presence. If you're not seen, they don't know you exist and they're calling other people. Every single day, every one of your competition is getting calls from somebody that you are not. There's a couple people maybe that are calling multiples of you. But every single day, the other company is getting phone calls just like you. And you have to think to yourself, why are those people calling that company over mine? Why are they calling the other company over me? Quite simply, their presence is better to that person than yours. Now, they could have it be a referral, which means that somebody used them, which found them somehow originally, and like them enough to talk to them. And they're the only ones that are present because they were the only ones that they were told about. Still presence. It's still being the one they see, they like, they trust, they call, they book. You have to do that. So when people go, well, what should I do? You know, if I don't door knock, what should I do? How can I advertise? Everything. The answer is everything. Now, with that being said, the ROI has to make sense. So certain things, it's, you're not going to buy a Super Bowl ad. That doesn't make sense. The money for what you get, it wouldn't work. Same thing with like billboards. I do not like billboards. They don't work well. People have to have your information to like email, text, call, check your website. It's They drive past billboards. They can't get the information. It doesn't make sense. Same thing with like golf cards. No one looks at golf cards. Could you get somebody? Yes, maybe. But, the, but everything you're on or everything your logo is, or everything that you put it out will touch people that aren't seeing it somewhere else. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to look at a, you know, Craigslist post. Yeah, they've probably seen you somewhere else. They've probably seen your trucks. They probably whatever. But yes, that may be the one thing they need to get your service. Presence. You have to be present everywhere possible. And does it take a lot of work? Yeah. It takes a ton of work. Fingers like, well, yeah, if I go door knock, okay, first off, you're upsetting everybody. Hey, my, my company is XYZ Window Cleaning. XYZ Window Cleaning just showed up. Now they go and hate on you and everything else. They're not happy. It's not a great experience. Yeah, but if I can be pushy enough, I can get people. Okay, neat. Building a company is a long-term thing. Getting just work in the door to make some money is a now. If that's what you're trying to do, go do some door knocking. That's fine. That's not a long-term play. That's a right now I could get a job. Well, not right now. It's February. Right? So be present. Be everywhere you possibly can. Your name, your posts. There's so many free things you can do out there. Groups on Facebook and Instagram posts and cool pictures and all of that stuff. There's a lot of free stuff on top of the paid stuff. Be present. Be everywhere somebody could possibly find you. Right? And I'll jump off real quick. I got to say, this podcast is brought to you by me. I'm Jersey. 
And I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is literally what I do to make money and to survive and to exist and to be able to buy groceries and keto snacks, right? That's what I do. And uh, I wanna be your rep. I would love to put in your orders. It costs you nothing more. It's not, there's no extra price to have me do this. It is literally like a virtual high five from you to me saying, thank you. Here's how I can thank you letting me put your orders in. It doesn't matter, small or big. It just does not matter. I want them all. And truly, for those of you who use me every time and every order, thank you so, so much, really. Um, it's genuinely amazing to me how many of you are just awesome. And um, thank you. It is, it is literally the way that I live in this world. And if I didn't have you people who put orders in with me, I would not be able to A, do videos, but I just would not exist. I would have to go work at Costco or something. So thank you for that. And if you want to, it's just as simple as giving me a call or even better, shooting me a text at 862-312-2026. And all you have to do, literally, if you like to shop yourself, put everything in your cart and click save this cart. It's a little line and it is in the checkout screen right above the checkout button you click save this cart and it's like a picture and i can see it you text me and say yo everything's in my cart man and i can take everything else from there make it super simple or if you're out and you're like you know what i know what i need but i'm not gonna jump on just text me yo dude i need this this and this man thank you i'll put it all together in the cart and I go hey your address is still one two three sweet i'll get it in i want to make it easy for you and genuinely that's how i make my money so please let me do that it doesn't cost you anything extra like i said and it is the most amazing thing you could possibly do and in the realm of window cleaning karma you will be um, bestowed upon an amazing business i don't know about that last part that may be a little far-fetched but it will make me happy so do that also uh if you haven't yet go and get the subscription to the american window cleaner magazine the longest running actual paper magazine shipped to your door with custom stickers and everything else and uh, guarantee you will love that magazine too and it's just another way to nerd out in the industry so go to awcmag.com and get that yeah anyway so back to how to grow i gotta tell you another thing that i always tell people like if you just change a piece just try this thing people go i tried it, it didn't work you didn't try it long enough because i know it works it works every time all the time and it's phone bids phone bids are scary to some people some of you are so focused on being absolutely precise laser focused and get just gotta be eyes off by seven dollars i can't there are so many things a phone bid does. If you bid over the phone, I'll tell you, the quickness, awesome. I don't have to spend 30 minutes. I don't have to go there. I don't have to drive there. It's done right now. But that's just the littlest part. The number one thing that I could do is I will close more work because of it. They don't want to call a bunch of people. Well, yeah, but I close them when I'm there because I talk. Yeah, but they have to wait till you show up. How many people just go and book it with somebody else? If somebody calls and goes, hey, I'm looking for a price on window cleaning. They want window cleaning. It's in their brain right now. I can look up their house, ask them a couple questions, give them a real price, tell them, hey, Tuesday the 7th, uh, we have an available appointment between 9 and 10 a.m. Or if you're more of an afternoon person, we can move you to the 12th, and that would be between 1 and 2. Uh, which one would you rather have? Booked. Done. But what that does by booking it, not only am I booking more people, it's getting it off there, it's doing all that, I'm getting those things in there, it took me three minutes to book. People are happier. They've started the experience amazingly. I've called four people. No one answered. Yeah, I not only answered, gave you a price, booked you in the schedule, and told you everything about it. You're done. But the biggest thing it does is if somebody books with you on the phone, they will not book with someone else. Now, in the world of market share, in the world of business, in the world of all of that, you need to have it all. That's it. Because eventually, if every person in your town who was going to get window cleaning was booked with somebody, you'd have what you have and that's pretty much it. But there will always be room for others to have businesses. 
And I'm not talking about taking money out of their mouths and all that stuff. I'm talking about why people call them, book with them, when they didn't call or book with you. You know you're the best choice. Doing phone bids stops that, and it books them with you, and it's done deal. It's easy. It's fast. And now I can book 30 jobs in a day. No one's doing 30 estimates out there in a day. If you are, you're, you can comment, uh, but you're lying. Um, that's a lot of driving. It's very, very hard to do. You could do that all over the phone and do everything else. And people love it because it's so fast, so simple, and you've just proven how much you know. I could give you a bit right over the phone because I know it all. Ask me any questions. You're comfortable with it? Awesome. Here's the price. Here's the date. Let's book it. Phone bids will seal the deal. They'll get you more yeses. They'll get it faster for you. And when you start doing everything else, getting more calls, it's how you can do 30 bids in a day. How many bids, if you're not doing phone bids, how many people wanted estimates that you just didn't make it to? Right? We get busy, especially in the busy season. Now it's done. Another piece to this growth puzzle is budgeting out your ads. We, I've talked about a marketing calendar. I'm not going to hit on that. We've made it. Watch back. Lots of episodes. Marketing calendar is absolutely a necessity. It is not a suggestion. It is not a fill in the blank. It is a 100% needed thing. You have to have the marketing, the advertising, budgeted and planned before the year. If you are slow, now it's February, so some places you're just slow. It's just going to happen. But if you're slow, it's because you're not getting people in. If you just sit back and you're like, yeah, all right, well, the phone's not really ringing. Why? Is it because it's February? Well, yeah, probably. But we're talking about how to be big in 2024. The phone will ring more if you're seen more. If those ads are put in places when you're super incredibly busy, remember presence, you have to put ads out there. If you're not advertising, you're just sitting back and going, well, I sure hope people stumble across me. You got your billboard in the garage. Budgeting ads, do 10% of your last year, put it into ads. Well, I can't do that. I'd have no money. You're not charging enough. Big companies, real companies charge enough to do what has to be done. Even if you don't want to grow, you still have to advertise to feed the beast you have where it is with the strength of companies and new business that's coming in, but existing people to find and buy your services. If you're not, somebody dies or moves and you don't have somebody new come in, there you go. We've already talked about focusing on existing people and increasing tickets on new and existing people. But now we have to talk about ads. How are you advertising? Well, you know, when when we're slow, I go, well, I got a couple bucks. In. No, you didn't plan for it. So now you're just whim. Hopefully that happens. It's not going to happen because you're slow. Now there's less people looking at it. You got to advertise when you're busy. You have to consistently advertise. It's like those guys out there. I hope you're not one of them either. But SEO, 1,000% of the time, will always be the number one thing you do. Always. It will do 50% of your... Incoming people will come from your website. If it's done right. If you go, no, no, got 10%, you're not, you're not doing it right. There are companies out there that can do that. There are people out there who know what they're doing. There are ads that you're doing for certain things. If your ads don't work, if your SEO doesn't work, if your whatever, if any of that doesn't work, it's because you're doing it wrong. SEO, leave that to to Monk SEO, right? Just a monk, those guys, phenomenal. When we talk about ads, we're talking about paying to be seen by people specifically. That could be Google. That could be Facebook. That could be all that stuff, but it has to be planned and it has to be budgeted. I need to know I'm spending $80,000 next year on ads. Where do they go? When does it go? What's printed? What's needed? What's happening? Now I have everything from EDDM campaigns. I got that all ready and boxed up, ready to go. I have my Facebook ads. I got that all planned for my three split tests. I have it all planned. I know what's getting spent when. So many people just go, eh, eh, we're going to go. Man, I'm going to be big. Why? How? How are you possibly going to be big if you're not guiding the ship? How? Plan for it. 
budget for the ads, and get it planned there. That all what we talked about now just comes back to got it all. I'm being seen by people. I'm increasing my tickets. I'm 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 strong in my my bidding. I'm getting these customers. That part of it's on lockdown. Now what can I do is efficiencies. The final way that you can just blow up in 2024 is your efficiencies. Let's sit back and look at how efficient you actually are. Really? Well, the schedule's full. Is it? Is it? Are your routes optimized? Is your driving optimized? Are you driving all over? Well, this one day we got about four hours of drive time. That's not at all efficient. Are you running efficient equipment? Do you not have water fed? Yes, I'm a salesman. Take this all with a grain of salt. But water fed will double your speed. Yeah, but I don't trust... Well, neat. That's neat that you don't trust it, but... Thousands of window cleaners do every single year. I am the hugest proponent. I've used it in my business before we sold for 15 years probably. I would not be a window cleaner without water fed. Water fed is always faster on anything that is going to be above a first floor. First floor is pretty on par. Okay. Now you've, you've told me about water fed. I, okay, whatever. That speeds you up. Putting your schedule together so that your closer jobs are together. Maybe you have a bigger, wider area. This block over here is paired together on certain days. This one's over here. Now I can cluster in those. My drive time's cut down. My efficiencies change. Maybe I can pair my crews a little bit different. So now my one really, really, really efficient guy is working with my little not-so-efficient guy because now they'll pair on each other and hopefully you know, work off of each other really, really well. Maybe I can put guys together in crews that are really close to like the same person as far as what they like. They both like sports. They both like this. They both like that. Their their vibe is going to be so well. They'll work amazingly together. I'm getting more production out of them. Maybe I have route all over the place. My route's not making it. Okay, great. So get out there and sell route in those places. Fill the spots. Make my route tighter. Now I make more money. Efficiencies are key. Always, because I guarantee there isn't a company out there. There's not one company out there in any world or industry or anything that cannot improve their efficiencies. There's not a company in any industry that could not benefit from that. There's always little ways. We see construction workers standing on the side of the road. Well, they're all looking down into a hole. That's not efficient. Again, an exaggerated example, but that's every piece, every piece to the puzzle. Efficiencies mean you can get more done in the same amount of time, in the same amount of crew, in the same amount of whatever, which increases your daily, which increases your numbers, your gross. Now I could get, well, I'm really, really running super efficient, but I'm still so busy. Now I hire somebody. Get them running as efficient as possible. Now I'm getting the maximum out of my company out of the staffing without killing them with, you know, not drive time, how my fuel costs go down and my, you know, all of these things are efficiencies. And I guarantee if you really sit back and listen and look at what you're at, you will see there's efficiency errors. There's something you need to change, a system you need to tighten up. When we talk about all this stuff, it's so awesome that, you know, the thousands of you that kind of hang out and listen to this every single week, We get to just babble and you listen to me and it's phenomenal and you make my day. I'm so glad that there are times I get to help people and they say, hey man, I did this thing and you mentioned it, I just want to say thank you. That's, That's change. But so many people listen to what we talk about. They nerd out in the industry anyway, right? So we're always... Finding something to look at, we're on Facebook and maybe you're subscribed to the magazine because you want to be a nerd in the industry and you want to be better and you don't want your competition to have a leg up anyway. But then there's so many of us that don't do anything about it. Oh, that was good things. And they just keep going to the exact same thing because comfort is exactly that. Comfort's comfort. Doing what you know is comfortable. Changing things is not, but... Those of you who have changed a piece of your company to try to strengthen will see a huge change. This is a forever change. If you do any of these things, and I hope 
Like there are some of you out there, by the way, high five if you're listening. There's some of you out there who do like everything that we talk about and just try it. And those are the guys that are doing like insane numbers when you guys are telling me like the growth numbers. And that's just, it is absolutely mind blowing when some of you just do that changes. Sometimes things don't work for your workflow. But stuff like this that we talk about is really good to just hang out. Hopefully you're just cleaning or doing whatever. Thank you for listening, by the way. But a lot of you aren't going to do a lot of the stuff. And it doesn't mean you have to. I'm a dummy who sits in front of a screen and babbles to no one. I literally talk to myself for half an hour every week. Then you guys listen to it afterwards. That's kind of insane when you think about that. But... I don't want to just talk to myself sometimes and not have people do things. So if you are like serious, and you're like, you know what? This is the year, man. Like last year, I didn't really do what I want. I know I could have done better. Okay, do better. Let's do better this year. 2024 is here. Let's do that. So hopefully you kind of at least listen to what we're doing and, and make some changes. Change is kind of fun when you see when something works. I remember years ago, and I, I'd do one little thing, and I'd be like, dude... I struck gold. I also have done stuff where I'm like, wow, I just really, <laughs> just, I really learned a, a hard lesson there that was an expensive hard lesson. But when you can do those type of things, uh, it changes your, your company. So hopefully it's changing your company in the best, best way possible. And if you want to change my com- company, or life. Let me put your orders in because I'm a rep and it's a shameless plug and that's what I do. Really. There's a lot of you who are like, yeah, I'm not going to bother. Eh, he doesn't want that. I'll, I'll let you know the bigger ones. Or I'll uh, I'll send you a bunch of messages, ask you a bunch of questions, and then use a bunch of other reps. I want to be a rep. What are you asking me questions for and then buying from somebody else? I want to be it. I want to be everything to you. <laughs> let me be everything. Anyway, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So please, please, please save it. Save it. Uh, comment on everything we do just because it's super, super nice. Um, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, also, I like to have, um, I like to know who made it this far. So um, if you're really still watching or listening and you are on the WCR Facebook or uh, YouTube page, Put a comment on there. Uh, you can say something, but the comments start it with the word pickle. I don't know you made it this far. There you go. Either way, I hope you guys have an amazing time. I hope 2024 is absolutely phenomenal. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.